Hi folks, it's Andy and welcome to Kendo Rant. <laughs> okay, I've got plenty of questions for you today, um, but before I get stuck in, don't forget to do all the like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment down below what you'd like me to uh, rant about next time, uh, and don't forget, shop at Kendo Star. <laughs> right, first question. Uh, hi Andy, thank you, thank you for your videos. Would you be so kind to explain uh, the concept of Kuzushi? Uh, in Kendo, Kuzushi. Okay, so I brought my Kendo uh, dictionary. I do actually know what it means, but I'm, I'm not looking it up right now. I, <laughs> I do know what it means, but I thought I'd give you the definition from here first, and then I can sort of um, expand on it a little bit, all right? So, uh, Kuzushi in, uh, let's see what it says. So here we are, uh, Kuzusu. Kuzusu, okay, that's where Kuzushi comes from. It says to destroy or to disrupt something which is properly organized. To disturb the opponent's kigamae, mental posture, uh, and migamae, physical posture, with one's own spirit, shinai, and movement. Okay, so there's lots of aspects of the term ki uh, Kuzushi in Kendo. Um, the most obvious one um, could be from Tubazeriai. Um, there's a... Often people refer to uh, kuzushi de men or kuzushi men, where you would um, use your tai sabaki and also your shinai to disrupt the opponent's posture, uh, to give them a strong push so that their posture breaks and you get the chance for hikiwaza. That's um, an example of using uh, kuzushi to uh, disturb the opponent's migamae. migamae. Uh, but it also can be used to disrupt the kigamae, okay? Uh, so, as you do the very strong seme, very strong uh, presence over your opponent, they get very intimidated, scared, and their their spirit starts to crumble. Uh, that is also kuzushi, okay? That also counts as kuzusu, all right? So, that's that's what the concept of uh, kuzushi is, all right? Um, the Japanese word is actually kuzusu. It means to, uh, again, to destroy or disrupt something uh, that was uh, properly organized beforehand. Okay, <laughs> next one. Um, I have a difficult subject for your Kendo run. Okay, um, I'm hitting a hard wall. Uh, Kendo has been my passion for over 13 years now and I'm fourth dan. Uh, it's taught me a lot about myself, uh, but I've also um, recently gone through hard times of balancing work and family, um, etc. I feel overwhelmed, uh, but as a leader at my dojo, if I were to quit or to take a leave of, of absence, my dojo, nearly 20 years old, would vanish overnight. All of the students would be left out in the cold. If you found yourself at a crossroads, cross crossroads like this, you can get my words out, uh, before. Uh, I feel like I still love Kendall, but the management of a dojo plus family plus career is bringing me to a breaking point. Any advice? Um, I'd like to remain anonymous. I'll keep you anonymous, don't worry. Uh, right, so... Um, yeah, uh, I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with. Um, uh, I really do. And it's certain, certainly something that, um, you know, uh, I've I've struggled with too. Uh, obviously, balancing uh, Kendo, uh, work life, family life, uh, it's, very di it's very difficult. Uh, and if you are the only person that's responsible uh, for keeping your dojo together, like you say, just walking away from it could result in the dojo disappearing. And that's obviously something that you don't want. Um, I think uh, there's sort of three things I'd say on this, uh, thinking about it. Um, the first thing I'd do is I'd, uh, I'd talk to the people in your club, the other people in your club, uh, and I'd talk about potentially uh, just taking a week off, right? Just a week. Um, you don't have to take a month off, uh, but just take a week off and just say, look, um, either can you guys practice by yourselves next week or... Um, can we take next week off and close the club for the week um, and just take some time away? And a, a week, you know, if you're practicing Kendo regularly, a week away from it will feel like a long time. Um, but use that time that you've intentionally set aside to take away from Kendo. That's different for like, it's different from when you intended to go but couldn't for some reason. This is time that you've intentionally set aside from it, yeah. Uh, to just take a break from it go back and think over what it is that you miss about being away from Kendall uh, in that time that you force yourself not to go. Um, first off, I'd do that. Um, and then what I'd also do is I'd, I'd talk at the, to the dojo members. You know, 
I, I realise that you're the leader, but there must be more regular, there must be other regular people that are coming. Um, and I talk to some of the more senior ones, even if they're not like senior, even if they're like not even done grades, it doesn't matter. But if they're regularly attending, um, that's, that's, that's enough. Yeah. Um, and I talk about sharing some of the responsibility with them. Um, you know, I told him and say, look, I can't do all of this myself on my own. Uh, it's too much for me to do as well as balance with my own work life and my family life. Um, so, you know, the management of the doors, yes, you'll still teach the class, but maybe like collecting the, the fees or paying the hall or, you know, updating the website, those sort of things that come with, with running a door door. Um, I delegate them to other other members. At the end of the day, at end of the day, they're benefiting from the dojo existing as well, so they have an incentive to do so, um, rather than just trying to take it all on yourself, right? Uh, and then once I've done that, <laughs> um, I think then, um, if I'm honest with you, um, yeah, take take a, take a week, um, maximum two away, um, see if you can delegate some of the stuff away, uh, and then you've got to suck it up a bit <laughs> for one of a better term. Uh, it's not, you know, um, that's part of what Kendo is for is to give us that adversity. It is hard to balance everything. Um, but Kendo is there to help you through that. Now, what you mustn't do, I don't think really, if you want to, uh, triumph over the situation that you're facing is turn your back on it and let the doors disappear. Um, I don't think you'll be happy if you do that. I think you'll be disappointed if that happens. So um, you have to just, to some extent, after you've done the other things that I said, uh, grit, grit your teeth a bit and, um, you know, in the hard times, push through them <laughs> um, and do your best, you know. Uh, it requires um, a lot of mental strength, of course, and a lot of understanding from your family um, and not necessarily from your employer or your workplace because that's not possible usually. Um, it's obviously not fair for you to expect that from them. Um, but uh, I'm sure your your, your family um, would be supportive of, of you if uh, they realise the benefit, the other benefits that Kendall brings to you, uh, which you in turn then bring to the family as well. So um, yeah, uh, that's that's where I am on that. <laughs> Next one. Um, hi, uh, can you talk about uh, the compressed bamboo furisen subiri shinai advantages, advantages, disadvantages, etc. Yes. Okay, here we go. Uh, so the compressed bamboo furisen um, subiri shinai is this this sort of uh, short stubby thing um, that's good for doing subiri. Um, if you go and watch the video I've done about doing subiri at home, how to practice at home, uh, I talk about how you can do subiri with this. Um, it's made of compressed bamboo. It's a big fat uh, shape like that, it weighs about a kilogram. So it's much heavier than a shinai um, and it's nice and short so you can use it inside without smashing your lights or denting your ceiling. Um, so obviously there, there are some of the advantages of it. It's very uh, portable and it's uh, it's very useful uh, for doing that sort of subidi inside. Um, in terms of the cons though, uh, you do have to be a bit careful with them because they don't have the length that a, uh, a shinai does or a subidi do does. Um, obviously. Um, so that means that they do actually respond differently to your swing. And you have to try and swing them in pretty much the same way as you would a shinai. Otherwise, you'll end up doing something like this that doesn't really develop good tenuji, um, and you, you know you might train yourself into bad habits. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend only doing somebody with one of these. Um, I, I I do recommend you know uh, using these. They are very useful. Like I say, if you've got a low ceiling and you want to practice somebody, particularly with footwork with ash sabaki, if you want to step forward and cut men, step back and cut men, these sort of things, it's very useful for that. Um, but at the same time, I'd be looking at also doing. Um, Doing somebody with a shinai as well, yeah, normal shinai. Um, and if you if you're living in a a, a place with a short ceiling, <clears throat> um, you could you could sit in a chair like I am now, and without using footwork, you can practice your somebody as well, so that you can still get the feeling, yeah, of actually swinging a shinai, yeah, because that's just as important, yeah. And then when you move to the uh, the the furisen, 
you are still um, trying to swing in the same sort of way. Um, and then when you when you really get confident, you can get yourself a Saburito, which is like this. I've talked about them before in these videos. And again, you try and swing this in a similar way to you would as you would a, sh a Shinai. Um, but you have to have to be careful with this because if you go to one of these too early, again, you'll teach yourself bad techniques, bad habits, stuff like that. Okay, next one. Uh, what exactly, uh, exactly is written in capitals, so I think that's the emphasis, uh, is meant when people say to use the hips. Um, <laughs> depending on who is explaining and to whom, the hips may involve using the abs, the knee, the glutes, and even the calves. Uh, while I understand that all these muscle groups are involved, I feel that the notion of the hips is too broad and can be confusing. Can you bring some light to this subject? Yeah. <laughs> I'm back with the book, okay? This book I keep referring to is the Japanese English Dictionary of Kendo. We've sell it on Kendo Star, so go and check it out. Um, right, so... <clears throat> on page 61 of this book, uh, there's a section that says koshi o ireru, koshi o ireru, uh, and that means to use the hips. That's what they mean when we say use the hips. Uh, it means in Japanese they say uh, koshi o ireru, and it says uh, to have a stable posture where the lower body is tightened, lower back and hips are tense, and the back straightened when in the chudan stance or in a striking position, or in a striking position. Yeah, um, above it it says koshio uh, hiku to be in an unbalanced posture in which the upper body is leaning forward and the hips are protruding backwards when the kamai is uh, or when in kamai or striking uh, posture. Uh, so that's the opposite, the wrong way. <coughs> okay, so look, I think you're overthinking this a little bit when you when you're saying like. Um, that you, you know the notion of using the hips is too broad. It's not a super specific term on purpose, right? Because what it means is that, look, your lower body, here, here's another way of thinking about it, right? Your lower body should be stable, firm and stable, yeah? Left heel up, tension in your left calf, and your, your lower body is a stable platform so that your upper body can be in good posture as you make kamae and relaxed, yeah? Upper body relaxed, shoulders relaxed, nice proud posture, straight head, straight neck, chin not up, chin not too down, yeah? And it, shoulders shoulders nice and wide, shoulder blades almost touching towards each other, not actually touching, but the idea like this, and nice and relaxed, but the lower body is a stable platform for you to move on, yeah? For you to move on, and the upper body doesn't move as you do that. Yeah, it's almost like as me, me moving around on this chair is how you would move, yeah, <laughs> if you were using the hips in that way. Um, and it's not just when you do kamae, but when you strike as well. So it means that the idea is that your posture, as you strike, your body goes forward this way, men like this, and it doesn't go men like this. So I'd hit men this way and not men this way, right? That's what it means. That's literally the idea. Right, so you have to push from your lower body. Your lower body is a stable platform, whilst your upper body is on top of that from the waist up, nice and relaxed, nice proud come out. And when you strike, man, this way, man, you're not striking this way, yeah, or this way, yeah, man. And the lower body from the waist and the hips downwards, and the the, the hips is basically that. Um, kind of key point that controls it, that stays level as you move forward, backwards, side to side. It doesn't dip up and down. Okay, that's that's what's meant by it. <laughs> um, I hope that makes sense. Um, right, last one. Uh, I tend to have my rear foot a little offset, i.e. not straight when I go in to hit. Uh, it's kind of, it kind of straightens a little while the foot is on the ground, therefore my skin always breaks at the pivoting location. Uh, my leather shoes tend to also have this pivot, uh, which tears up the shoes at the same spot, uh, in which uh, which prompted me to remember one of your prior rants about not straight foot. Uh, do you know of any methods of how to change it to straight? So what you're talking about here is um, when you're in Chudan, 
your your feet instead of being dead straight like this is turned out to the side or when you move you're not moving straight but you're moving to the side and then when you start to hit you're turning this way to try and hit which is what people do when they do it this way and then you're starting to split the skin here or you're um you're getting blisters and what have you uh, that's why you have to keep your feet straight because otherwise that's what happens to you um Look, there's no secret to it, I'm afraid. There's no shortcut. There's no um, secret uh, teaching that they don't tell you anywhere outside of Japan. Uh, this kind of, oh, if you do this, your feet suddenly become straight. There's none of that, unfortunately. The fact is you have to practice basic footwork whilst keeping your toes all pointing forward. And you have to focus on that. Also, another thing you can do is you can think about your hip bone as well. As you stand in Kamai, make sure that that's pointing forward towards your uh, your opponent, yeah? Point your hip bone forward as well, yeah? So that your hips are dead straight, okay? And this kind of, uh, that's another reason actually, another reason why you don't wanna do footwork with your, your uh, feet pointing this way. Because if you do so, you won't be able to hit using your hips like the previous question said, yeah? Because your hips will be, instead of straight this way, your hips will be sideways like this. And when you try to hit, you'll break your posture this way or this way, but you won't be able to hit straight, okay? That's the reason you have to keep your feet nice and straight, okay? So there is no secret tip I can give you to fix that. You have to do it with your own willpower, I'm afraid. <laughs> you have to go to the dojo, you have to focus on it every single time you do ashisabaki, every time you do suburi, every time you do uh, anything really. Uh, but you can practice at home. That's the great thing about ashisabaki. You don't need a lot of space. You don't need high ceilings. You can practice it at home. Okay, so every time you practice, focus on keeping your feet straight, feet straight, feet straight, toes forward, hips forward. Uh, and with practice and patience, um, I think you'll get better at it. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, <laughs> don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Uh, yeah, join the Kendall Show Early Access group too. It's written on the screen somewhere and there's a link in the description. That's where a lot of these questions have come from. It's a great place to post your questions because it's a fantastic community of Kendoka from all around the world. Uh, if you really like the videos that I'm doing, uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that. Did I already say that? Probably like three times already, but you know what to do. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I posted Kendo Gamer yesterday. If you haven't watched that go and watch it if you like video games it's basically i sit there playing on video games whilst chatting about kendo it's a load of fun um tomorrow i'll be doing another analysis video and um, we these have been really successful uh, i've been really happy about how well they've been going and um, so i will be doing another one of those tomorrow as well uh, and if you do enjoy the content i put out don't forget to shop at kendo star because that's what makes sure that's what makes sure that i can keep doing it okay <laughs> kendostar.com right thank, thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you all next time